I call on the representative of Pakistan. Mr. President, my delegation is obliged to exercise its right of reply in response to the baseless and misleading assertions made by India. India continues to peddle a false narrative in this forum, year after year, relying on tactics of denial, distortion, and deflection. However, these distortions cannot alter the reality that Jammu and Kashmir is an internationally recognized disputed territory. It has never been, nor will ever be, a part of India, nor is it an internal matter. The United Nations Security Council, through numerous resolutions, has unequivocally called for a free impartial plebiscite to enable the people of Jammu and Kashmir to exercise their inalienable right to self-determination. India is obligated under Article 25 of the UN Charter to implement these resolutions. Yet, instead of honoring its obligations, India has chosen the path of repression, subjecting the legitimate aspirations of the Kashmiri people for self-determination through a brutal and oppressive occupation. India's illegal and unilateral actions of 5 August 2019 further intensified th this occupation, with nearly one million soldiers deployed to suppress the Kashmiri's legitimate right. My Prime Minister shed a spotlight on these facts today, which may be uncomfortable for India, yet this remains the truth, which India cannot deny through its sophistry. Mr. President, India's crimes in IIOJK are heinous and committed with impunity. Innocent civilians, including women and children, are being targeted through staged encounters, extrajudicial killings, and collective punishment. Entire villages have been razed. The entire Kashmiri political leaders remain incarcerated, and a media blackout continues to stifle independent voices. This is the largest military occupation in the world, where over 8 million Kashmiris live in a perpetual state of siege and horror. The reports of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights and statements from over a dozen UN Special Rapporteurs have documented these widespread violations and called for the investigation of human rights violations in IIOJK. Yet, India has consistently denied them access to the occupied territory. Mr. President, India has once again resorted to the familiar tactic of deflecting global attention from its own terror activities by raising baseless accusations of terrorism. It is ironic that a country which uses terrorism as an instrument of state policy against its neighbors should attempt to point fingers at others. India, which has been sponsoring terrorism and orchestrating assassination campaigns is hardly in a position to lecture others on this issue. In addition to its state terrorism against the defenseless people of IIOJK, India continues to sponsor terror activities, not only against Pakistan, but also in other countries. For decades, India has been the primary perpetrator, supporter, and financer of terrorism. India's sponsorship of terrorist organizations such as the Hariket Taliban, Pakistan, and the Balochistan Liberation Army has led to the loss of thousands of innocent Pakistani lives. Pakistan has shared irrefutable evidence of India's involvement in terrorism with the international community. The arrest and conviction of Kulbushan Yadav, a serving Indian naval officer and an operative of India's intelligence agency, RAW, is irrefutable evidence of India's state-sponsored terrorism against Pakistan, including targeted assassinations in Pakistan. Now, the Indian terrorist franchise has gone global, 
with assassinations and attempted murders of political dissidents on North American soil. Mr. President, the delegation of India referred to the events of 1971, which were not a question of genocide, but of India's foreign aggression and attack on national sovereignty and territorial integrity of Pakistan. I would like to request the Indian delegation to refer to the General Assembly Resolution of December 1971, which upheld the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Pakistan against the foreign invasion. Mr. President, while the Indian delegate referred to India as the biggest democracy, the world knows that the India's reign of terror against its minorities continues unabated. The BJP RSS government, which has ruled India since 2014, is imposing a reign of fear and violence, not only against the people of IIOJK, but also against its own Muslims, Christians, Dalits, and other low-caste Hindus. Islamophobia has deeply infiltrated the Indian state, where 200 million Muslims face lynching by cow vigilantes and pogroms led by RSS, often with government complicity. Muslims are facing forced conversions, disenfranchisement, restrictions like the hijab ban, and the destruction of hundreds of mosques, including the Babri Masjid, all aimed at erasing Muslim identity and culture, which are integral parts of India's history. Mr. President, India must end its state-sponsored terrorism, seize its illegal occupation of Jammu and Kashmir, and fulfill its obligations under international law. Pakistan has been and will continue to highlight India's state terrorism against our people and the people of Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Make no mistake, Indian state terrorism in IIOJK will not be able to dampen the indomitable spirit of those seeking their inalienable right to self-determination nor will India's attempt to divert attention from its sponsorship of terrorism ever succeed. I thank you, Mr. President.